Budgeting the life is most important. A mere financial budgeting is not required, not enough. If you budget the whole life, you can live in a heaven wherever you go. Welcome once again to News Analysis. News Analysis, a weekly magazine on current affairs. To begin with, the main points in a nutshell. Syria crisis, Kofi Annan seeks to set up monitoring team. Afghanistan massacre, Hamid Karzai chides US on probe. George Clooney arrested at Sudan Embassy. Neutrinos clocked at light speed in new Icarus test. China's new rules of microblog users to take effect. India seeks three Iranians over Delhi attack. And now the news in detail. Syria crisis, Kofi Annan seeks to set up monitoring team. The UN and Arab League envoy in Syria, Kofi Annan says he is sending a team to Damascus to discuss setting up a new international monitoring mission. After briefing the Security Council about his peace efforts, Mr. Annan renewed calls for an end to fighting for unimpeded humanitarian aid. Syria said it was ready to cooperate with Mr. Annan, but also reaffirmed its determination to combat terrorists. Meanwhile, the Turkish government has urged its nationals to leave Syria. The foreign ministry in Ankara said developments in Syria have led to serious security risks. Mr. Annan, who led the talks with President Bashar al-Assad in Damascus last week, briefed the Security Council in New York via video link from Geneva on Friday. In a news conference later, he said a UN team would visit Syria at the weekend to explore the possibility of a new international observation mission. He also restated the main aims of his peace initiative, an immediate ceasefire by both sides, access to humanitarian aid and the beginning of political dialogue. The international community remains divided on Syria with Russia and China, both blocking UN Security Council resolutions on Syria and aid groups from 27 countries urging them to condemn the government's use of violence. But the two permanent members have backed Mr. Annan's peace mission. Mr. Annan was speaking a day after the first anniversary of the country's uprising, which has left more than 8,000 people dead. The violence has continued despite a month-long observer mission sent by the Arab League in December and January. Its aim was to verify implementation of a now-defunct peace initiative. President Azad insists that the troops are fighting armed gangs seeking to destabilize Syria. Refugee flow, the rebel Free Syrian Army is fighting government troops in several parts of the country. The Turkish Foreign Ministry on Friday issued a statement saying development in Syria poses serious security risks for our nationals. Therefore, it strongly recommended that Turkish nationals currently in Syria leave and return home. The ministry also said consular services in Damascus would end at the end of office hours next Thursday, but the consulate in the second city of Aleppo would remain open. Two Turkish journalists are currently missing in Syria and reportedly in the hands of security forces. Some reports say they have been wounded and tortured. It's, uh, it's going to be tough, it's going to be difficult, but we have to have hope. I am optimistic, I'm optimistic for several reasons. First of all, I've been here for a very short period. Almost every Syrian I've met wants peace. They want the violence to stop, they want to move on with their lives. I presented a set of proposals, concrete proposals to the president which will have a real impact on the ground once it is agreed. It will help launch the process and it will also help the crisis 
on the ground. Afghanistan massacre Hamid Karzai chides U.S. on probe. Afghanistan President Hamid Karzai has accused the U.S. of not fully cooperating with the probe into the massacre of 16 civilians by American servicemen. The soldier accused of killing is on his way to the U.S. from Kuwait, where he was being held and is expected to face a military tribunal there. Afghan MPs had demanded the soldier be tried in public in Afghanistan. Mr. Karzai earlier met relatives of the dead who demanded justice. Men, women and children were shot and killed at close range as a U.S. soldier apparently went on a rampage in villages close to NATO base in the remote Panchwai district of southern Kandahar province. President Karzai told reporters that the chief of the official investigation into those killings had not received the cooperation it expected from the U.S. He also said the problem of civilian casualties at the hands of NATO forces had gone for too long. This is by all means the end of the rope here, Mr. Karzai said. On Wednesday, Mr. Karzai told the U.S. that it must pull back its troops from village areas and allow Afghan security forces to take the lead in an effort to reduce such civilian deaths. The Taliban also called off peace talks in the wake of the killings, although they made no mention of the massacre in their statement. Earlier, the president met relatives of those who had been killed last Sunday. The assembled villages berated him and urged him to seek justice. Some of the villagers believe there was more than one gunman, an allegation that has repeatedly contradicted the official version since Sunday when the shootings took place. He assured villagers that he would pursue that allegation. President Karzai listened as surviving family members from the Kandahar massacre gave their versions of the murders during the meeting in a grand hall in the presidential palace. Why did this happen? demanded one man who lost nine members of his family. Do you have an answer, Mr. President? No, no, I do not, responded a tired-looking Mr. Karzai. The reporters in Kabul says the president's strong public condemnation of his most important ally is certain to frustrate the U.S., which has been trying to limit the damage from these latest incidents as they deal with an unpredictable president. This intervention adds new strain to an already troubled partnership, our correspondent says. Some details about the alleged killer also emerged from the lawyer who said he represented him. John Henry Brown said the soldier, who has not been named, had received body and brain injuries while serving in Iraq and had been unhappy about doing another tour of duty. George Clooney arrested at Sudan Embassy. George Clooney has been arrested for civil disobedience during a demonstration outside Sudan's embassy in Washington, D.C. The actor was taking part in a protest to warn humanitarian crisis in the volatile border area between Sudan and South Sudan. His father, Nick, was also detained during the demonstration. George Clooney is a keen Sudan activist and has made a number of trips to the region. The Hollywood star, his father, and fellow activists were led away in handcuffs after reportedly ignoring repeated police warnings to leave the embassy grounds. Secret Service spokesman George Ogleve told the reporters George Clooney was arrested for crossing a police line at the Sudan embassy and he'll be transported for the Metropolitan Police Department, 2nd District. Also arrested, said Mr. Aglevy, were Martin Luther King III, son of the civil rights leader, Massachusetts Democratic Congressman Jim McGovern, Virginia Democratic Congressman Jim Moran, and National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, President Ben Jealous. Clooney's arrest comes a day after he met the President Barack Obama at the White House to discuss Sudan's situation. The actor recently secretly traveled across the border to the Nuba Mountains in Sudan, where his group apparently witnessed a rocket attack. A YouTube video of this visit was uploaded on Thursday. 
He told the U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee this week that that was happening in the region was ominously similar to the violence in Darfur. The UN estimates that nearly 3 lakh people have died and 2.7 billion people have been displaced since the Darfur conflict broke out in 2003. Neutrinos clocked at light speed in New Icarus test. An experiment to repeat a test of the speed of subatomic particles known as neutrinos has found that they do not travel faster than light. Results announced in September suggested that neutrinos can exceed light speed but were met with skepticism as that would upend Einstein's theory of relativity. A test run by a different group of the same laboratory has now clocked them traveling at precisely light speed. The results have been posted online. The results in September from the Opera Group of the Grand Sasso Underground Laboratory in Italy shocked the world, threatening to upend century of physics as well as relativity, which holds the speed of light to be the universe's absolute speed limit. Now the Icarus group based at the same laboratory has weighed in again, having already cut some down on the original Opera claim. Shortly after the claim, Nobel laureate Sheldon Glasser co-authored a physical review letters paper that modeled how faster than light neutrinos would have as they have traveled. In November, the Icarus group showed in a paper posted on online server Arxiv that the neutrinos displayed no such behavior. However, they have now supplemented that indirect result with a test just like that carried out by the OPRA team. Speedy result, the Icarus experiment uses 600 tons, 4,30,000 liters of liquid argon to detect the arrival of neutrinos sent through 730 kilometers of rock from the CERN laboratory in Switzerland.